There's a grouse over there. And it's a spruce grouse, too. Famous for not moving. I tend to walk right up to them. Survival is not easy, and it's not what gets paraded across TV screens. What I set out to do with Survivor Man was to teach survival skills, skills that would help to keep you alive in a horrible ordeal. But it's never stopped there, because the intrigue has been enough to not only start an entire TV phenomenon, but to also cause those curious enough about their own abilities to want to try it out for themselves. Well, TV is one thing. Survival is another. And if someone is going to attempt to learn survival skills under my watch, they're going to have to do it for real. Just them, me, and the wilderness. You know, from the very first days of Survivor Man, I've been asked by the viewers, all of you, to bring someone out with me. Over 200 of you submitted videos to a contest where one lucky viewer or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, would win a chance to come out here and survive with me. Joe McConnell won the day. My name's Joe McConnell from New York, and I've never done survival stuff. I've camped, but the most that I've been without resources is really 24 hours. I'll hike him far into the bush, away from roads, where he can experience some of my kind of survival. I'm open for the mystery of it all, learning as much as I can from Les and learning about how the show is made stuff that I can use in the future when I go on trips. Now, I happen to know that Joe's an independent filmmaker and that that part of my job has him excited. But what he's forgetting is that out here, it's still survival. And no matter what he or any other viewer of Survivor Man thinks, it's not as easy as it looks. Joe's got a backpack full of gear, but I want to throw him off his game immediately. So I've laid out a table of survival items. What he doesn't know is that after I challenge him to show me the top two priority items he would take for survival, those two things are all I'm going to let him take into the bush, period. All right, so we have essentially a plethora of survival gear. Slingshot, snare wire, fire starter, water filtration, rope, rain poncho. You've got a survival kit. I've put in a whole assortment of knives, yeah, matches, mm -hmm. some bit of food, a pair of gloves even, that sort of thing. Realistically, if you and I knew that we were going off into these woods, operating with the knowledge that anything can happen, what I'd like you to do is look over my stuff and your stuff, and to start with, just to start with the process, I'd like you to pick out what you think are the two most important items on this table that should go with you for sure, you know, in priority, number one and number two. Oh, jeez. Um, first, I'd probably take the water bottle. Okay. Because it, it has a filter in there. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, I mean, assuming one of us has a multi-tool, I'd say like the hatchet, the hatchet. chopping wood. Okay. And are you, so are you settled you would go with the water bottle and the hatchet? I think so, yeah. But from here forward, put those with your pack. That's all you got. That's it. OK. That's what you're going out with, are those two items. I can't have you out there camping. Deal? Deal. Let's go. Awesome. Joe makes his first mistake. He assumed that I would have a multi-tool and even that we would stick together. He has more surprises coming to him. Real survival is usually a surprise. It's difficult to prepare for, and I need Joe unprepared if he's to actually experience true survival. As the crew take the last shots with the drone, the team hangs back, and Joe and I continue into the bush together, but alone. I'm going to leave all of the nights and where we stop and what happens to the unknown. So I'm not going to answer any questions on even if I have a plan in my head. So you can trust me. But whatever you do, don't rely on me. That's the strongest thing I could say to you while we're out here. Do not rely on me. Trust me is fine. Rely on yourself from the next step you take forward, 
Everything is about yourself and surviving out here. Mm -hmm. A heart attack, break an ankle, anything could happen and I'm left. Now I have to rely on you. Yeah. I don't want you as a liability. I want you as an asset. If you rely only on me, you're a liability. Mm -hmm. So next step you take, this is, this is yours now, okay? And you've got this. Both Joe and I are walking on an old established trail. It'll take us much deeper, much farther into the woods. This will run out on us. And that's, that's when things change somewhat. And not usually for the better. So the decisions are about to become yours. When we stop, where we stop, how we stop, I wanna leave those up to you. I'm just gonna follow suit. And I'm going to not even comment on the decisions you make, okay? Okay. So, take the lead. I don't wanna tag along. I don't wanna look after anyone. That would make it easy for Joe. So I've given him the responsibility of not only looking after himself, but also making our first major decisions with no input from me. Some of his choices could be exactly what I would never do, but it's the only way he'll learn the truths about survival. Got some anxiety, but I'm trying to keep calm. I don't really know what the best place to sleep would be. I would be okay sleeping next to a tree. Then again, I don't know how cold it's gonna get. What I really wanna do is let Joe make his own mistakes. I think he'll do fine. He's calm. And that's number one thing for survival. Remain calm. There's gonna be some tough challenges for him, especially at night. This wouldn't be a horrible spot. I mean, it seems dry. There's a lot of trees. There's probably firewood. This is your choice? I think so, yeah. Here's the catch. Yeah. You stay here alone. <laughs> okay. So you stay here alone. I'm gonna find a spot for me. Okay. The only uh, equality I'm going to give you on my scenario okay. is if you don't get a fire going, I won't get a fire going. Okay? okay. So even if I can, I won't. Since I have your whistle, mm -hmm. I'll give you two whistles if I get a fire going before you come down. Okay. And uh, I'll give you three whistles if there's any danger, something wrong. Mm -hmm. Other than that. I would rather, if there's danger, just blow the heck out of that blow thing. Just out. keep blowing and blowing. Okay. The three short shots thing, I get it, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to remember, especially for young kids and that. Yeah. But if you have real trouble, blow the whistle and I will come running at all costs. Okay. So I think, um, I think as far as uh, you getting a fire going, no, I wanna come and make sure you're still alive. So sure. I'll come down and check on you before it's too dark and yeah. then, uh, or maybe in the dark and make sure. And then, uh, so no need. Let's save the whistle for the ultimate emergency. Okay. Let's save it for like, I'm in real trouble here. I need some help. Uh, and it'll be the same for me. You hear me whistling either with my fingers or with a whistle? Yeah. I'm in trouble. Never mind three blasts of anything. Okay, so save the whistle. I'm gonna be far enough away so that you definitely feel alone tonight. Okay? Good? I'm good, yeah. I am going to look for a place to survive as well. I think I'll probably go uphill a little bit, okay? All right. All right. Cool. I'll, I'll come back and check See on you. See you soon. I can tell he wasn't ready for this, to be left alone. <sighs> and he's made his next mistake. He's picked a location low in elevation where all the cool air will settle on him through the night. I'm headed up to where it could be as much as 10 degrees warmer. But I refuse to lead him by the hand. He's got to learn things on his own. In a remote wilderness location, I've taken Joe McConnell out for a taste of survival. Survivor man style. Complete immersion. No safety net. And this is the only way to do it. Because even if I was 50 feet away in a situation like this, you feel alone. Tucked down in behind me here, there's a little spot, big pine tree, that I can kind of sleep under. And at least that gives me something to sit up against at night. What I very much want is to be out of the wind, and this will definitely be a spot out of the wind. I'm gonna tuck in there. I'm doing it again. I have to listen to the wise words of Les Stroud. You sweat, you die. One of the things I'm doing is constantly breaking these branches with my hands instead of using my knife simply because this time of year in the spring, it's just easier to do it. So 
save my knife, keep it sharp, and just use my hands when I can. So I don't know if he's gonna get a fire going, and I already promised that if he doesn't, I won't. So I at least wanna be up off the ground and stay warm. I hate leaving him to not do well if he doesn't do well. But it's the best way to learn. Joe makes another mistake, and one that can cost him dearly. He's not familiar with using a flint striker, so instead of using the axe blade, he hits it with a rock. The flint stick broke. See if I can improvise with it now. The natural beauty of a North American forest can hide the truth of how difficult it can be to survive within one. A lot of time left here before the sun goes down. But one thing I wanted to try out, doing a little bit of a test this time on survival gear, it's a, it's a chainsaw blade. Not so bad. That worked. If I need to cut some bigger branches, I'll try this saw again. Hope he's not too bummed out about being alone. Unfortunately, being alone is part of survival. One thing that Joe did do was he thought that we were only a half an hour away from sunsetting. So he thought maybe he should be looking for a place to, to sleep. Never wait till a half an hour before sunset to find that place that you've got to spend the night. For me, I like to have at least an hour and a half of time if I know I've got to do something like this. Over the many years of surviving out in places like this, what I've been doing is often just wearing um, a raincoat. Raincoat and rain pants is usually what I have with me. Not since survival school, when I was training in survival, have I come out and instead of wearing a rain jacket, wear a simple rain poncho. They make great roofs. So, a little blast from the past with this uh, rain poncho, and I think that's gonna work out pretty cool. And I've got a knife, belt knife on me, and my own design survival kit. I actually haven't had a chance to, to test it out in a, in a situation like this, in actual survival. So, now's the time. I'm a little worried about the sun going down here right now. I just want to get set up for the night. So instead of going through what I have in my survival kit now, I'll do that tomorrow. For tonight, I just want this little bit of rope that's in here. Oh, I hope he gets that fire going. So I can get mine going. All right. A rope. I'm gonna have to tell him to put more rope in. It's not that much. Let's try and figure out a different way to do this. One long branch, like that one. Is all I need. That'll make all the difference. I guess I forget how much I've done this, how familiar I am with the pitfalls or benefits of certain actions taken in the bush. I take for granted skills that over many years have simply become a part of me. Observing Joe is reminding me of how uncomfortable or even miserable survival can truly be. I'm not hearing a lot of cracking or breaking the branches, so I'm assuming he's pretty settled but I don't smell any wood smoke either. How are we doing here? Doing okay. Trying to uh, get this fire going, as you can see. Boom. Ooh. 
That's not a good sign. No. Yeah, all flint strikers, especially when they're the, the tube type, the pressure on them is important because if you press down on them, you snap them like a wood dowling. Yeah. Um, that's one of the thickest strikers you can get. A lot of them are much thinner and smaller, mm -hmm. so it comes down to going with the slide, oh, the slide. You know, making sure you get the slide right sort of thing. I was kind of bashing yeah. it. <laughs> what is the best rock to use the flint against? Um, or what should I use the flint against? The blade of the axe. The blade of the axe. Would make sense. Yeah. But for now, I'll leave you to the night. All right. You got that one bit of knowledge about using the axe instead of a rock. All right, Joe. Good luck. I'll see you on the other side of darkness. First zone, myself. I kind of know what I'm carrying with me. Second zone was when I actually ended up making a shelter move. I decided to change and put my shelter somewhere else because my second zone of assessment, the immediate area, showed me a better place to be. This is the third zone of assessment, further and farther beyond. For this area, this is the low spot, which means the cold will drop down into here and settle here. If I were to have a shelter right here, although it's nice and open, it could be as much as 10 degrees colder than up there. This is the elevation that Joe is at. It's doing these zones of assessment that gives me the information I need to make the right decisions. Calms the mind when you know what's around you for a bit of an extended distance. He feels fine right now because he's busy, he's active. The minute he stops, the minute both of us stop, cool right down, our body temperatures will start to calm and cool right down. And that's dangerous. Joe's pretty, well, he's nowhere near as far along as I was hoping he was going to be. He's got nothing to sleep on on the ground. Clothing that's going to keep him a bit warm until it's, you know, until we get into the middle of the night. <sighs> he broke the striker because he was using a rock instead of the hatchet to get the spark. And although now I've told him what to do, how to get a better spark with that little tiny bit he's got left, he's using tinder that isn't really going to catch a spark very well. He's going to have a tough night, maybe even a miserable night. Try this again tomorrow night, and I'll give him some tips. And you kind of have to go through a night like that to understand why you want to take care and make sure you're covered the next time you have to spend a night out in the wilderness alone. Well, I'm getting a lot more sparks now that Les told me to use a blade. I'm going to keep trying. I finally got a fire going, but I'm exhausted. That's not easy at all. Huh. Well, my young apprentice got his fire going, and he's got something to be very proud of, because that couldn't have been easy. But that means I can do the same. It's great because I know that inside that survival kit, there should be some matches. Moon's starting to come out. It's incredible actually how bright it is. Sometimes that can make you feel more comfortable because you can see a bit. Sometimes it freaks you out because you can see a bit. Nothing compares to surviving the darkness and the cold. Survival comes down to 3 a.m. Survive is a verb. I mean, it really is the true essence of the, of the word survival. You've got to survive this properly. Joe and I have a long day tomorrow. Longer than he can expect. I'm not sure what time it is, but all of a sudden it got freezing. Like the cold just rolled in, and the mosquitoes all night. Mm -hmm. buzzing around constantly. Just hoping and praying that the sun comes up soon.
Even after wrapping myself in, actually, there, there's a one of those emergency, I call them space blankets, inside the survival kit. So I took it, wrapped it around me, wrapped my rain poncho around me, and the fire, the fire died. I, I fell asleep, and still, all wrapped up this way, I still woke up with a horrible chill right down my spine. Just that, oh and I had to get up and stoke the fire. You don't sleep much in a survival situation. So I hope, I hope Joe is doing actually better than I am. Oh, I hate waking up with a chill. It's just, uh, it always makes you wonder what you're doing out here. Joe will be asking himself the same questions throughout the night. Why did I do this? What am I doing out here? But I can't make it easy for him. He has to go through this for real. Because real survival has never been about TV. Real survival is about making it through the night. It's about staying alive to survive another day. It's early morning, the sun hasn't quite risen yet. It'll be up soon and that'll make a big difference for both of us. I can hear branches breaking, so I know that Joe's keeping his fire going. That would have been a lifesaver for him last night. I want to get us moved deeper into the bush. And I think best of all today, I'm going to hunt for grouse all the way along the trail. Let's see if I can get us some dinner. I better go look on Joe. All righty. Well, I filled up my water container. And I'm just going to go back up to camp, try to thaw out a bit more, and pray to the gods that it gets a little warmer. My feet are doing good. My hands are cold now. Don't want to sound like I'm complaining. But I guess I am. There's a lot of fog really early in the morning, which made it much colder. Yeah, I need to get warm. And I ask myself, what other crazy things does Les Stroud have in store for me today? I really hope he shows up at my camp at some point and doesn't radio me or make me go out to find him. So I'm really terrible with directions. I don't even know where the sun is. Well, here we go. I think today what I'll do now is start to give him some instruction, help him out a bit. What he doesn't know is that he'll be alone again tonight, but at least now he may be expecting it or be ready for it. Morning. Good morning, Les. Still got your fire going? It went out a few times, but yeah, it's back. Yeah. So? It was cold. <laughs> it was really cold. Dropped down a bit, yeah. didn't it? I'm going to take today, and um, now I'm going to give you some help. OK. So we'll have a much better night tonight. The help I give him will be knowledge. I want him to see how I set up my camp, and I'm hoping he'll take note of everything except for the rain poncho. He can see that on another day. I need him to concentrate on his next move. He's got a lot more padding than I had on my bed is right underneath a tree, so he could lean up against it. And his fire pit is much smaller, and it's right next to his bed. And there's running water nearby. I had insulation between myself and the ground, so no coldness coming through the ground at all. Yeah. I still got chilled. I still had the chill in the middle of the night. You had a lot more padding. Yeah. A much easier fire pit to make, too. All right, goodbye trail.
as we walk, number one, the blazes that you make, you want to make them on the, the far side of the trees. Okay. Because we're the ones that might need it mm -hmm. to get out. You turn around and you look back and you blazed all the other sides of the trees as you're going, because that's the easy thing, right? Mm -hmm. You walk along, you blaze a tree, you keep walking. That's great for coming in. Mm -hmm. But if you want to come back out, there's nothing to look at. This is a thick forest, and we're far from roads. We're as out there as anyone can be in a real survival situation. So if things go wrong at all, they'll go horribly wrong. So I need Joe to concentrate, to put forth the effort at relying upon himself and effecting true survival. Yet in spite of his constant willingness to do whatever it takes, I noticed his efforts at making a trail fall off within the first hour of bushwhacking. I highly recommend eating snow. Keep your body temperature cooled down. Without proper trail marking, neither one of us could likely find our way out easily if we get into real trouble. But I'll push us onward. These leaves here? Do you have a pocket? I do. Yeah, gather a bunch of this up. This is called uh, Labrador tea. Okay. It's gonna make a nice drink later on. It's a trail. And so it's a tough decision. You come, it's like, wow. Oh my gosh, we found a trail, we're saved. Yeah. But which way do you go and how far does it go? Some of these trails can go for miles and then peter out into nothing. Other times they could be a half a mile from a road. In this case, I want to keep us going due east. So we're actually going to ignore this trail. If you're OK and you're comfortable and you're traveling right and you know what you're doing, always trust your compass. Yeah. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble when you diverge. In fact, people die because they diverge. Joe and I are just getting beat here by swamps that every, every couple of hundred yards, we end up hitting another swamp. This is a big one. It's really slowing us down. We're not getting far at all. That's, it's all the spring melt. Hour after hour pass with cold, wet snow on the ground and a blisteringly hot sun overhead as we sweat and work away our energy, burning up thousands of calories with each stumble and step forward. Try skirting the edge of it. I mean, it looks pretty wet over there. Try and stay a foot or two higher than the swamp. Okay, another swamp down. Hey, can you come back here? There's a grouse over there. And it's a spruce grouse, too. Famous for not moving. I tend to walk right up to them. Wow, that's perfect, eh? Just sitting right there like that? All right. Next time. Because the time of the day the sun's moved around, so now what I'm doing is instead of putting the sun direct, directly in front of me and my, my forehead walking east, I'm keeping it on like this part of my temple, right? Because it's moved. So I keep it over there now, but I'm going that way, and that keeps me still going relatively east, relatively on a street. That keeps me going on. I need some food. I can only hope that Joe is paying attention to the little tricks and techniques that I'm showing him along the way. Joe and I are just getting beat here by swamps that every, every couple of hundred yards we end up hitting another swamp. And... Uh, this is a big one. It's really slowing us down. We're not getting far at all. That's, it's all the spring melt. Uh, 
That's a lot of water, Joe. Yeah. Ooh. All right, that's a ton of water. That's a big woodpecker. Well, let's go down and survey the damage and just see which way we're gonna have to go to get around this. All right, so pay attention to this stuff here. Are you familiar with this at all? No. So this is sphagnum moss, and this is the place to get it. It's down around swamps like this. There's a few things. A lot of times if you squeeze it, you can get good water out of it and drink. And the other is, uh, it's the best toilet paper out here. So if you need it, this is the stuff to look for. Just be careful walking in it because you can sink down quite a bit. Some salvation. Joseph and I have been pushing for hours and hours. There's a trail here. Problem is whether or not it goes where we need it to go or if we have to keep walking straight. Joe and I have pushed hard for many hours, and I don't really know yet how far we've made it. As much as I'm being hard on him, I need to give him a boost and get his spirits up. Since you didn't pick any food on the table. Oh my God. I did. We can uh, ration it out. Uh, we can take half and half and eat it all up now. Uh, I'm good with either. I would say ration it out. You want to ration it out? I think, I think you should ration. I think you should try rationing. Yeah. I'm going to finish mine, which is a little crazy. You're going to crazy. just wolf it. I'm going to wolf it, not okay. because I think that's the right thing to do. It's an interesting dynamic for me to have finished my food and you to be rationing your food. You know what's going to happen is you, each day you look forward to that one little bite. It's really incredible. And I won't have that. We've decided to push forward past the little trail, following a line due east to a destination at a distant lake that I saw on a map. But we're forced to give that up, as I can tell we're getting nowhere near. In fact, this whole day feels like crawling through the thick bush. One step forward, two steps back. And we're getting soaked to the skin from all the spring melt. Frustration and survival don't go together well. And we're exhausting ourselves just trying to make some headway in what feels like an impossible trajectory. Oh, this is a sight for sore eyes. To see this in front of me and know that I can I can, I can follow this one. <sighs> Magic. We're gonna uh, drop our packs and just do a little reconnaissance mission and check this out. Thank God that Les brought some food and gave me a little snack. I'm gonna ration that for however long it takes to get out. Never underestimate the power of Les Stroud. I was bumbling around like a Doofus the last hour. I was so exhausted and so tired. I thought it was like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It was 12.45. We got a lot to learn about survival. Once again, I sprung it on Joe that he must survive the night alone. He indeed does have a lot to learn, and I can't lead him by the hand. I can only be an example. It took Joe and I seven hours to go one mile. That's how thick that bush was. You know, what's interesting is, in all my years of survival, I've broken into cottages, broken into cabins, houses, used little shacks, little survival huts, different things like that, but yet I have never survived alongside of railroad tracks, so that's what we'll do. So first for everything. Sure, we could, we could just push hard and walk out of here, but then that's not survival. That was a heck of a day. I better go check on them. Small fire, that's a good sign. 
Well, I think we got beat up pretty good today. So let's stop. Let's work on getting some food tomorrow. And then we can, you know, we can head out the, the following day after that. I'll leave you to the night. I'm going to go back and yeah. get my firewood, get all okay. that stuff. All right. All right. Have a good night. You too. So Les has once again left me to my own devices. Originally, I thought uh, I'd be hanging out with Les at the campfire while he plays harmonica, but I've been thrown into making my own shelters, having to learn firsthand how to do this. I have never camped alone by myself, even with a tent. So here I am listening to his advice and get some more bedding. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought he would be much further along. After his experience last night, I, I thought he'd have a whole big bed of boughs and a big pile of firewood, and uh, he doesn't. It's hard to hold back and not fix Joe's mistakes for him, but this is about himself and the wilderness. I don't want to be a part of the equation just yet. Okay, it's finally cooled down enough. We're gonna try Labrador tea. That's awesome. I'm actually gonna go to bed soon while it's still light out. So if I could sleep maybe from eight to 10 or eight to 11, that'd be wonderful. And I could just stay up the rest of the night and watch the fire and hang out. Again, I take for granted my own knowledge of how to manage my energy in a survival situation. The key is to be as active as possible during the daylight, storing up lots of firewood, and securing shelter so that your body is tired and will allow you to sleep throughout the night. Joe's doing the opposite, leaving him with scant firewood and little protection from the cold ground. Oh, I'm just trying to bring some warmth back into my toes. Only possible way to stay warm, I'm finding, is to use the hot rocks. I hope, uh, hope Joe is thinking to do that. I haven't slept, because I've got to keep this fire going. And every time I've fallen asleep for like 10 minutes, the fire goes out. <sighs> Trying to decide whether or not to make myself throw up or not, because that Labrador tea or spruce didn't react well. It's just like sitting in my throat like heartburn. I don't want to throw up, but it might be good for me. It's gonna be a night without sleep again. Joe is getting almost no sleep, and exhaustion is beginning to overtake him. He's not making enough of a change in his survival actions to really help himself. So I'll take the next step, and we can begin to survive together. Howdy. Oh, okay. Got your own little tent here. Actually, that's my rain poncho. Oh, okay. But come up, take a look. I mean, that's the obvious difference. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, what do you notice? Your fire pit's a lot different than yesterday's. It's like deeper and sunken in, and then you have a ton of firewood here. Yeah. And that's one of the things we're gonna fix tonight is your fires are still really quite small. Okay. And my bed is also like probably six times bigger than yours. Well, we're gonna fix this tonight for you. Okay. Tonight we're gonna... I don't have a rain poncho though. You don't, but um, let's take a look over here. Though I haven't needed to use too much just yet, I've laid out all of the contents of the survival kit. And I'll give Joe another chance, picking some more items to help him survive. So take a look at these items. Tell me what two items from this pile you would now take after your experience. Right, I would have taken my uh, waterproof matches. The matches in your water bottle. Those are two really good choices. For me, always first, matches or lighter. Now, if I knew I was going long term, I would take a flint striker because I know how to use it and it will last years. Yeah. Whereas matches and lighters, they run out. The second item would be a shelter overhead. Well, for today, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, here, the garbage bag's now yours. Okay. You're going to have a roof tonight with that. All I'll right. show you how to use it, how to get it set up, and that'll give you a bit of a reflective roof. Cool. And, uh, matches. Matches. Hallelujah. The other thing that 
we have in this kit is fishing gear. All right. Okay. You want to give it a shot? Sure, I'll give it a shot. There's no rod or reel, but I can show Joe how to make one out of some garbage I spotted floating on the lake nearby. The prospect of food can be a great motivator. And this is going to be your fishing rod. Never tried that before. Clearly, you're not watching enough Survivor Man shows. So tie the fishing line right around here. Wind all the rest around. We'll have our hook, whatever jig on the end. And you take it like this, get some out. Lands, take the line like that. I don't worry about the bottle, and I, and I start playing it back. Okay. Oh. All right, time to make a throwing stick. Because I keep hearing grouse, and this looks like it might be a good throwing stick. It's a live tree, it's hardwood, and it's got a nice bend in it. Ooh, that's got some weight to it. Let's go shorten that up a bit, smooth it out a bit, and I got a ready-made club for hopefully catching some dinner. I see something, but I don't know if it's a grouse or not. Oh, it's a red squirrel. Well, one of the things about looking for grouse is that they tend to go back to the same log to sit and thump, sit and call their mates over and over again. So if you can find that log, you can actually hide there, sit and wait it out because sooner or later, even after you've initially scared them, they'll come back. All right, I'm gonna do one more. Let's sort of circle around here. I know. It's up here somewhere, I can hear it. Joe also asked for the bandana from the survival kit. One small item that can make a big difference for him, since he badly burned his head in the sun during the bushwhacking. So I understand now what Les talks about on the show all the time. My mental faculties are starting to break down. I haven't been sleeping much. I'm hungry. My body is sore. If I were on my own, no way I would make it. Finding my grouse and I'm kind of getting way off base here. I can't even see the lake anymore, so. Ow! Ah! Uh. Oh! I know I'll laugh about this later, but I just got jammed hard. A stick that was sticking upright right into the nether regions, right into the boys. Oh. oh my gosh. After an unsuccessful hunt, and with no luck fishing either, it's time to move on. This time, we'll follow the tracks, something I've never done before in a survival situation. Well, I propose that we uh, start to make tracks. Get to our next location. Sure. All set? Yep. We'll try fishing at every lake and river we pass, gathering any advantages we see as we trek along, including any helpful garbage, always with each discovery along the way attempting to make things easier for survival. Sticking to the tracks gives us the psychological boost of familiar surroundings, but offers little in terms of survival. In the end, they're nothing more than big hunks of steel on gravel, Hardly the advantage I'm looking for, but they do make travel 100% easier. And after yesterday's impossible bushwhacking experience, we'll take anything we can get. All right, so for the last, mm, unfortunately about half an hour to 45 minutes, Joe and I have been stumped by where to uh, set up camp for the night. And now, of course, we got rain coming in. Joe is incredibly willing to push forward, always. His will to survive is strong, but his body and mind are giving him the most trouble. I can tell as I watch him work that he's foggy. He's not concentrating. He often stumbles as he gathers supplies in the bush, and for every 50 branches I might grab, he grabs 10. I can only push him so hard, as I want him to finish this out feeling successful. I don't need to break him. I just need him to experience true survival for what it really is brutally difficult, uncomfortable, 
just plain hard. Survival is not camping, and it never will be. You want to do the honors, or you want me to? I'd love to. Uh, all right. All yours. Joe and I settle in, we pretty much have similar circumstances to the last couple of nights in terms of the weather. It's clear, it's still, uh, it's likely to get chilly again, I don't really know. But the fact that we're both here together, we can keep the fire going. Unfortunate that we had no luck with fishing, unfortunate that we had no luck with hunting. Uh, it wasn't for lack of effort, but both of us are getting to that point now where you go, you go this many days without food and uh, you start to stumble a bit, feel a little bit drunk. I know Joe was definitely feeling uh, a bit stumbly walking around when we were trying to get all of this organized. And we're just gonna wait out the night. Hopefully sleep out the night. Apparently Joe's warm enough to sleep tonight. Physically, mentally, I hated it at points. Like, I really didn't want to be where I was at certain times, but I'm really grateful. It was a remarkable and terrifying experience. Don't take less lightly. Like, I had, I, I thought I prepared for this, but no, not at all. I had no clue what, what the stuff was like that he does. Like, it's the real deal. It's no joke. When you sign up for survival with me, you sign up for the real thing. There's no crew to joke around with, no bed to sleep in after the filming is done, nowhere to go, so you have to survive. If you want to know what survival is like, then removing yourself from your comfort zone is the only way. It's the way of survival. This time we both have to come back to the campers. <laughs> 